What is going on everybody, my name is Robert Watkin and welcome back to another tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make a cool little intro for your YouTube videos. Yeah, basically I'm going to be showing you how to add some text, get this little glitchy effect, um, and then choose a background for that intro. Now, what I want you to do with this is interpret it in your own way. I don't want you to just copy it exactly as it is. I'm kind of leaving it in a way where you can make it how you want. But I'm going to show you how to do this little glitch effect at the start of the intro and the end of the intro. You can have the text however you want it. You can have the font however you want it. You can have the background however you want it. You can have the audio however you want it. I'm also going to add a link in the description which will take you to a mega download page. And on that page, you will be able to download some sound effects for the glitch effect I'm about to show. So getting straight into the video, you can see we are here in Vegas Pro 16. We're going to right click insert video track. Once we've done that, we're going to add some text. So right click on that track and click insert text media. You should have this window pop up. I've just dragged it across there. And this is where you can type in anything you want. Now I'm going to put in my channel name. If it's just going to be for one video in particular, then you could just put the video title um, or you could use it however you want it. It's up to you, but I'm going to put my channel name in here so robert does tutorials and if i just move this a bit i'm going to shrink this and move this to the left we can see it has shown up in the window here now the text is a little bit big so i'm going to select all the text using Control and a and i'm going to shrink it down a bit to maybe like 24 or something now we can see this is also just the default vidana text this is not the text i want if you've seen my channel a lot, you'll know I do like a specific type of font. Um, it's called Edo SZ. So I'm just going to click on here and start typing that in. And um, we can see there it is. And this is the font I'm going to be using now. I would recommend you choose your own font. You can use this one if you want, of course. But choose your own font. If you don't know how to download fonts for Vegas Pro, there's plenty of tutorials online. I think I may have actually done a tutorial on it. I can't even remember at this point. <laughs> um, but yeah, just... Have a play around, find some fonts that you like and add it into the video. Now I actually have already got a preset, uh, so I'm just going to select that instead. Just because then it's already got the text orange how I like it. Um, so I'm just going to have to change that back to Robert Does Tutorials. Yeah, there we go. So now we've got the text that is step one out of the way. Um, if you want to, you can have a mess around with any of these other features. We've got some outlines. Uh, we've got some shadow down here. So have a play around with these features. See what looks good. See what doesn't look good. Um, and overall, just make it how you want it. At the end of the day, this is your intro. So try and make it unique to you. And I'm actually going to keep that little outline. I kind of like it now that it's there. So now it's time for step two, the glitch. So what I'm going to do is just zoom in on the timeline here. I'm also going to move this to the start of the track. And I'm going to right click insert a new video track. Now what we're going to do is go to media generators, this tab here. And we're going to type in test pattern. We can see we've got the test pattern here. You want to click on SMPTE bars. So we're just going to drag this onto that new track. Uh, we can close this straight away. We don't need to see this menu. And we're also just going to split it here using the S key and deleting that in bit off. So now it's just the length of the video. I'm going to zoom in a bit more again. Now this is another thing you are going to be able to change on your own. Wherever you have this actual track, this clip, is where the glitch effect is going to take place. Now like I said, I want it to happen at the beginning and the end of the clip. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to add all the effects to this pattern. And then once I've added all the effects and got the glitch in place, I'm then going to choose where I want it on the clip. This will probably make a bit more sense as we're going through the process. So the first thing you want to do is go to video effects, click on the search up here, and you want to type in TV and look for TV simulator, you can see here. You want to click on reset to none and drag it onto that top clip. Now you should get this window pop up. Um, for some reason these windows keep popping up on my second monitor, but I've dragged it across now. Uh, and what you want to do is mess around with the line sync and the vertical sync until you get it kind of wiggly and um, you'll see what i mean here but if we kind of adjust this you can see how it gets really really wiggly on here if we draw if we drag the bottom one this does it kind of vertically well that's why it says vertical sync so we're gonna yeah reduce the line sync a bit maybe about half uh the vertical sync as well maybe to about here and we're gonna hit play and you can see it's now kind of fuzzy it's jumping about the place and what's gonna happen is this is essentially gonna be the glitch so 
like I said, it'll make more sense when we kind of get through the process and it all comes together. Um, just imagine how serious or how intense you want the glitch to be. Um, so if you want it really intense, I'd really reduce the line sync. And you can see you get this really, really kind of jagged sort of glitch. Um, or if you want a really, like, a little subtle glitch, then just have it a very little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go about half on here. A little bit less for the vertical sync. Um, and we'll have a play of that. So that's looking good to me. So now once you've got that wiggly effect kind of in place, you want to go back over to your video effects panel down here and you want to search for pixelate and you want to click on default and drag that onto the test pattern. Now you'll get another little menu here with some options. You want to adjust this quite a lot until you see a decent amount of pixelation on screen. Um, so we'll start with the horizontal and then do the vertical. And once it gets kind of as blocky as you want it, so I'm going to say maybe about a little bit more for the horizontal. About there, so you can see it's kind of, well, it's pixelated, it's cubey, um, and I quite like the size of the cubes, so if we play that now, the wiggliness is still kind of there, but it's more just pixelated, it's more blocky as opposed to being a smooth, smooth kind of uh, wiggle. Um, so yeah, you can see that works quite well. So now we're quite close to having the glitch effect in place. Once you have got the pixelation on, um, and you've got your wiggly effect, you want to go over to the three little lines here on that uh, test pattern track. Um, so it's called the more button. You click on that, and you want to click on compositing mode. You then want to choose custom, and then look for Vegas displacement map, and click OK. So now once you've added the displacement map, if you click play, you will see it is glitching. It is kind of doing what we want it to do um, we do need to do some more adjustments though so the first thing we're going to do is adjust the scale now i'm just going to reduce this a bit because i don't want it to be that glitchy it's maybe about half of what it is at the moment and we can see that looks a bit more like an actual glitch as opposed to the entire thing just spazzing out completely <laughs> and then we want to click on the edge pixel handling to wrap pixels around if it is already on transparent background then change it to wrap pixels around and now we can close this little menu here and this is where we can choose where we want the glitch to occur. Now what I'm going to do is split towards the beginning of the test pattern and towards the end of the test pattern and just delete that middle section. And if we hit play, we've got a little glitch at the beginning and a little glitch at the end. Now you can see the middle is still a bit funny here. We are going to resolve this in a minute, so don't worry about that. But at the moment, we've got the main glitch occurring, which is what we wanted. So now once we've got these glitches in place, we're going to want to add a background. Now you can leave it as blank, um, you can add a colour, you can do whatever you want. For the purposes of this, I am just going to add a blank colour to the background. So if you go into media generators, you can search for solid colour, and then you can see you get some good colours here to use. Uh, you can also use some other stuff like gradients. If we type in gradients here and choose colour gradients, you can get some funky stuff here. Um, but you could do something like this blue backdrop, for example, and have that as the background. Uh, now personally, I don't like that as a background, but uh, if we were to drag this in, we can then edit it and change, change the effect if we want, um, change the colors to whatever we want um, have a play around with that for this like i said i'm just going to choose a solid color and i'm going to drag the white because i quite like just the white background and then i'm going to cut the end here using the s key and deleting that last little bit off so there we go now the next thing i want to do is actually fix this center part of the track where we can see that if we look the text is being kind of pushed to the side a bit um, that's because of the displacement map we added earlier, and it means that this S at the end of the name is being pushed all the way around. To fix this, you want to render out what we have at the moment. Um, so to do this, we're going to first create a loop at the top of the video. So you can do this by clicking at either the start or the end of the video, and just dragging along until we cover the full area. You can then right-click on this little loop region we've just created, and choose Render to New Track. Now I'm going to choose Internet HD 1080p 60fps, that is the standard uh, video setting I use for my videos which I put on YouTube. I would recommend you do the same standard for whatever videos you put on YouTube, not necessarily just what I'm choosing here. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a folder to save it in, so we can see how to make an intro, this is where I'm going to save it. If I click save here, and then I'm just going to name it down here to Draft1, and then click Render. Now it's asking uh, if I want to overwrite the file, that's just because I did actually make a mistake earlier in this video and had to start again. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to click yes for that and then it'll start rendering. Now it says, do you want your project settings to match the media? I'm just going to choose yes for this, just to make sure we're not losing any frames. And now what we're going to do here is actually 
use this track for the glitch because this track contains the glitch now what we're going to do is split at the end of this test pattern and at the beginning of this test pattern and then delete that middle bit so all we've got is this section where these test patterns were and because of this we can actually now remove this test pattern track we don't need this track anymore and that'll get rid of the displacement map and that'll actually fix the issue we had before so if we right click on this track now we can choose delete track and then if we play from the beginning we'll see it glitches it shows the name of the channel and then it glitches again now i do think it's a bit long so what i'm going to do is actually shorten this a bit because i do feel the intro is a little bit long so to do this i'm just going to shorten these clips here to about three seconds or so and then just drag this glitch along now that we've got this glitch actually contained in its own little clip we could actually move it anywhere in the video and have like multiple glitches if we wanted so we could copy that little track and paste it a few times and we could have like glitch 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 and then we can actually change the length of it and have like a shorter glitch a longer glitch however we want um so you can see it makes it quite easy once you get to this point to just edit the glitch and have as many glitches as you want and then the last thing we're going to need is some sound effects because if uh, if someone was to watch this video and they were to see this glitch it would look a bit weird without any sound um so what we're going to do now is actually add some glitch sound effects so this is where i want to bring you to the oh my dog so this is where I want to bring you to the mega page. Oh my god, Lily, stop. So this is where I'm going to bring you to the mega page. So if you click the link in the description below, it should bring you to a page similar to this. Uh, well, you'll see glitchsoundeffects.mp4. If you click download on that, give it a minute. Um, wait for that file to download. It shouldn't take long. It's less than a megabyte. Um, it says it's an mp4, but it does actually just contain audio. So I don't know why it's, it's, it's done that. I don't know why it's done that. But yeah, you want to basically drag that into your project media here so you can have the sound effects. And then what you're going to do is drag this down to below all your current clips and that'll just put on a new track. You can see it is just an audio file here. Now what you can do is look at these little audio spikes. You can see where some audio is and audio is in each of these little audio spikes is a new glitch sound effect. So if we have a play on some of these... You can hear there's a lot of a lot of glitch sound effects that you can use within this. So now I want you to select some that you enjoy. So I'm going to choose this one here. And I quite like this one here. Um, so I've got two now. I'm going to delete the rest because I don't need that. And I'm going to use these two here. So I'm going to just double tap D so I can select both of these. Double tap D again and then drag to the left. Now what I'm going to do is try and align these sound effects with the glitches as best as I can. So I think the first thing I'm going to actually want to do is move uh, the, the whole video, the whole intro a bit forward. So once again, I'm going to double tap D, select this entire section, double tap D again, and just move it across a bit so we've got a bit more room at the start to work with. And we'll start with that first glitch. So if we hit play now. So I quite like the way it's coincidentally lined up for the end bit of the glitch sound effect. Although I feel like the glitch isn't long enough, so what I'm actually going to do is just copy the glitch and paste it again. And just shorten the second bit so we can have a bit more of a glitch length and then we can adjust the audio. Looking at the audio spikes once again, um, so we can actually just see how well it's lining up. I'm going to make this uh, timeline a bit bigger so we can see here. And then I think I'm actually going to speed up the sound effect. So to do that, just hold control on your keyboard, click at the beginning of the clip or the end of the clip and drag it inwards. Instead of shortening it, it'll actually speed it up. And then I'm going to do the same for the end. So I'm going to adjust this how I want it. I'm actually going to add a little glitch here. And a glitch here as well. I'm just kind of playing around with how the audio lines up with the glitches um, until I've got it how I want it. So this is all it is at the end of the day. It's just playing around, seeing how it sounds, seeing how it looks. Um, seeing how it sounds, that does not make sense. <laughs> so there we go. That, that That's quite good. That I'm going to play this from the beginning. And I'm going to have one more look at it before I do the final step of this intro. So you can see there we go. We've got a nice little intro there. It's quite basic but it's quite nice it's effective and um, there's many things you can do with this you can actually add sound effects and audio and music and whatever you want to it you can change the color of the background you can change the font you can do many things with it and it's very customizable 
So the only thing we need to do now is actually render this out. Now what I'm going to do is actually do what we've done before. I'm going to select all of the footage using that loop region at the top. I'm going to right click on the loop region and click render to new track. We're then going to call this draft 2. And the reason it's still a draft is because there's actually one more effect I want to add to this just to make it a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more fun. Um, so then we're going to click render. And we'll give that a minute. And we can see it's now on a new track on its own. So if you wanted, you could delete all the stuff below it and it wouldn't matter. I'm, I'm going to leave it there for now just in case I want to edit in the future. Um, but what we're going to do is add one more effect to this top clip. Now this final effect, you will only be able to add if you have sapphire plugins if you don't have sapphire plugins then i just recommend you sticking with the intro you've currently got or you can click the link in the description to a tutorial i've got on my channel where you can get the sapphire plugins for free um but what you want to do is go over to the video effects here and you want to search for shake and you can see it's part of the sapphire plugins because it begins with s and underscore and then you want to drag on the default version of the shake now if we play this you'll see it is shaking quite rapidly we don't want it shaking that much so what you're going to do is reduce the amplitude to about 0.4 or so and reduce the frequency to about one it doesn't have to be exact and um, like i said as well you can't just play around with it and adjust it how you like but we're going to see how this looks so if we play this now And you can see that little that little bit of movement does add to it quite a lot. Even though it's just a basic little effect, it does make it feel quite a lot more live. I am actually going to increase the frequency a bit to maybe 1.5 just so it's moving a little bit faster. And there we go. We've got the final intro. So I'm happy with that. I like the way that looks. I might actually start using it on the channel from now on. Um, so if you see that, if you see that in the future, uh, if you see it at the start of this video, um, then you know... I've, I've liked it quite a lot, <laughs> but that's going to be it for this video guys. The only thing you've got to do now is actually render it out. Um, so if you go file render as and you can render it out that way, or you could just render it to a new track like I've done before. Um, but I would recommend rendering it out to somewhere where you know you're going to have access to that for all of your projects. So what I mean by that is... I've got a folder called video media and this is where I store as you can see my outro and now I'm going to store my intro. So if I click save here and render that out, I've now got a nice little folder with my intro and outro. Yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Somehow managed to get through this without Vegas crashing, and I haven't even saved it. So I'm, I'm quite lucky that uh, quite lucky that it didn't crash, because Vegas is uh, very bad for crashing. Vegas just literally crashed while I was talking about how it didn't crash. Nice. Yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I know this was a longer tutorial than usual, but I wanted to do a little bit of a longer one with me coming back to the channel, sort of. Um, and if it was a bit hard to follow at times, I'm sorry for that. I am trying to still get back into the swing of things and get used to explaining things quite well. Um, but hopefully you did understand. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did enjoy the video and you did find it helpful, please leave a like down below. Also, if you want to see more tutorials in the future, then please subscribe for more content. And if you want to recommend any tutorials as well, then just do that in the comments below because I'm always open for suggestions. But that's going to be it for this video. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video of whatever I make. Bye-bye.